In this video, I will be explaining how to use the Lagrange method for solving an optimization problem. The problem that we have here, because of terrain difficulties, two sides of a fence can be built for $6 per foot, while the other two sides cost $4 per foot. Find the field maximum area that can be enclosed for $1,800. So we have this constraint. We need to enclose this area, but we have only $1,800. So this is a constraint. So we cannot build whatever terrain we want. And we need to enclose the maximum area, but we have only $1,800. What to do? So here is the, a picture of the terrain. So we have here that this side is $6, $6 per foot, and, the, and this is $4 per foot. This is $4 per foot, and this is $6 per foot. The first thing that we need to do is just fix the variable. So what are the variables we have in the problem? And I noted that we have, for example, this x. So we can call this x the length of the rectangle here. So this is x, so this will be x again. And we have, so this is the first thing to know what are the variables, what thing I can variate in the problem. And also I can change this length here, the width of the, of the rectangle. Let's call it this y. So we have the variables, y and x. Well, we have two variables. And now that we have the variables, let's see what is the function that we are going to maximize and what is the function that define this constraint. So for getting the solution of the problem, just then in terms of the variable that I know I have here, x and y, type the function. And the function that we want to maximize is the area. And we know that the area is x times y. This is a rectangle. So we have here the area in terms of two variables, x and y. This is the function that we want to maximize. And now, see what is the constraint. The constraint is here, yeah? so we have $1,800. So the cost needs to be $1,800. So let's define the cost. The cost will be $6 multiplied by the length of this side, plus $4 multiplied by the length of this side, plus Again, four dollar multiplied by the length of this side and six multiplied by y. So the cost will be six x plus six y plus four x plus four y. Whatever is x, I need to multiply this x times this x and that will give me the cost of building this side here. And four times y will give me the cost of this and four times s will give me the cost of this side, and six times y will give me the cost of this side. If I multiply the cost per foot for the number of feet, it will give me the cost of the side. So we can simplify this. This is six x plus four x, it will be 10 x plus 10 y. That will be the cost. And this cost need to be 1800. So that is the constraint. So we have the problem. The problem is maximize this area, so find the maximum value of the area, subject to this constraint that 10x plus 10y need to be $1,800. So this is the problem. This is the maximization problem. That is what we need to solve. This constraint must be written in this way. Type the equation equals zero. So it will be 10x plus 10y minus 1800 equals zero. So that's the way that we type the constraint if we are going to use this method. So we are going to maximize this function subject to this constraint. 10x plus 10y minus 1800 equals zero. And now that we have this, let's see what are the steps for solving a problem like this. After you have that, you have defined the problem. Now follow three steps. The first step, is get the Lagrange function. And we know that the Lagrange function will have a new variable, lambda. So we have the function that we are going to maximize minus lambda times the constraint. So that will be the Lagrange function. 
the function that we want to maximize minus lambda times the constraint. And the constraint written in this way equals zero. So this is g of xy. This 10x plus 10y minus 1800. So let's do that. f of xy is this xy here. The area is defined this way, x multiplied by y. And this lambda is the new variable included in this Lagrange method. So it will be xy minus lambda this. So this is the first step. Define the Lagrange function. And after you have this, then as a second step, find the partial derivative respect of each of these variables. So you're going to find the partial derivative respect to x, the partial derivative respect to y, and the partial derivative respect to lambda, the new variable. It will be a good idea to, to simplify this, making this multiplication here, xy minus lambda multiplied by 10x minus 10 lambda x minus 10 lambda y plus 1800 lambda. So type it in this way. And now that you have already simplified the function, as a second step, get the partial derivative respect to each of the variable. Now we have three variables, the two original variables, x and y, and the new variable that we have included, lambda. So let's get the partial derivative of a second step, the partial derivative respect to each of them. So we're going to get the partial derivative respect to the variable x. So in this case, will be the derivative of x, y, and because we are getting the derivative respect to x, y is a constant. This is a constant multiplied by x, so the derivative is just a constant. So it will be y minus, here we have another constant multiplying x minus 10 lambda, because lambda, I told you that is a variable, but now, because we are making the derivative respect to x, we are considering lambda as a constant. So it will be minus 10 lambda, if this is a constant, so multiplying x, so minus 10 lambda, and we have the derivative respect to x, because now here, if you notice, this, this minus 10 lambda y is the derivative is zero respect to x because it doesn't have an x here. This is like a constant respect to x. This 1800 lambda is a constant respect to x. Okay, so we have the partial derivative respect to x. Then get now the partial derivative respect to y. And it will be the same, yeah? Respect to y will be, now y is the variable, x is the constant. Here the partial derivative is x. Here the derivative respect to y is zero, and here the, the derivative respect to y is minus 10 lambda. The derivative of the last term respect to y is zero. So I'm going to do the same. The derivative respect to y will be x minus 10 lambda. And finally, get the derivative respect to lambda, and the derivative respect to lambda of this is zero, xy doesn't have lambda, so for lambda this is a constant, the derivative is zero. Here is minus 10x multiplying lambda, so minus 10x will be the derivative, minus 10x. Here it will be minus 10y multiplying lambda, so minus 10y is considered now a constant multiplying this variable lambda, so it will be minus 10y. And finally, 1800 lambda, 1800 is a constant, multiplying lambda, the derivative is 1800, so it will be plus 1800. And now we have the partial derivative of each of them. This is the second step. As a third step, make all this partial derivative equal zero and solve the equations. So it will be a system of equations. So it will be then y minus 10 lambda equals zero, x minus 10 lambda equals 0, and minus 10x minus 10y plus 1800 equals 0. So we have three equations. Three equations, three unknowns, so it can be solved. And in this case, they are linear equation. If you have a system that solves linear equation, like R or Excel, use this for solving the linear equation. In this case, it's very easy, so you can notice that here you can get that y equals 10 lambda, and you can substitute this 10 lambda here. 
y. So you can do this for solving this problem here. So y equal 10 lambda. And now this 10 lambda can be substituted here. So it will be actually x equal 10 lambda here. And obviously because 10 lambda is the same of y, so I can substitute, then we have that x and y will be the same. Okay, both of them are equal to 10 lambda. And now that we have that x and y are the same, I can substitute y by x here. So we have here minus 10x minus 10x plus 1800 equals 0. So we have this equation. And obviously minus 10x minus 10x minus 20x equals 18. Minus 20x plus 1800 equals 0. And this is an easy equation. You can move the 1800 one side and then divide by negative 20x, for example. And you will notice that x equals 90. So we have now a solution for x. Because y and x are the same, then y will be 90 also. So we have the value of y. And now that we have x and y, so we know that this will be the solution. So we have the value of x and y. So substitute in the original function to find the optimum value of the function. So that will be like a fourth step. But here you know where could be the maximum. Okay? So substitute the value to find the optimum value of the function. Let's make a substitution. Okay? So what happened if the, in the original value, what happened if x equal 90 and y equal 90? So the area will be a square, yeah, and a square, 90 times 90. So the area is given by x equal y, multiply, just make a substitution, and we know that the area will be, so it will be an square. Okay? So it will be 90 square. And this is equal to 8100. This will be the solution. But how I know that this is the maximum? Take another other possible value. Make, for example, y close to zero. If y equals zero, then x will be 180. So we'll have x equal 180 and y equals zero. Substitute this value in the area and you notice that the area will be zero. And you will notice that the area will be smaller than this. So remember, anyway, 10x plus 10y need to be 1800. To check if this is really a maximum, it means that whatever other value for y, the area will be smaller than 1800. Just check it. So this gives me the maximum area. And with that, I finish my explanation of this problem. I hope you have found it useful. Thank you.